Hello and welcome back. My name is Priest and today I am reviewing a PowerSoft free online screen recorder. So the first thing I like to do is show you this image and you can see the basic features that I require from a free desktop recording program. I thought that it's the best idea to have some sort of standard and this is the one I'm gonna go by and I wish if you could all let me know what do you think and should I add something. These are simple tools that every program should come with. So moving on, first thing I like to do is check out the website. First thing that I see when I open up the website is that A Powersoft is actually a company that designed a bunch of programs and I see that they do have Screen Capture Pro and they, then they have Online Free Recorder, Free Screen Recorder. So let us click on the Online Free Screen Recorder and see what exactly is going on here. So the first thing I see is User Guide, Features, Screenshots, Knowledge Base and Comments. So let us click on Features and what it does is it just slides me down the website to a sort of a slideshow of features. So record screen with a button. We have output formats listed. We have some scenarios. We have some more stuff here. Hmm. I'm not really liking this slideshow type of feature rundown. I would rather you just list it uh, in some sort of a table, but really missing what I usually look for. I think everybody looks for this. You don't want to scroll through and have them bo boast about the program. You want them to give you clear feature rundown on a paper, black on white. But nothing really is going on here like that. And that's first thing that turns me off with this. This usually tells me hmm, they might be putting up some sort of front end, like just putting on the makeup and what's actually going on. Well, let's find out. So we are looking at the free screen recorder, but they do have screen recorder Pro. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, what is Screen Capture Pro? If I click on it, you'll find out that it's multifunctional screenshot program. So we click on Screen Recorder Pro and over here, let's see if there's option. Nope, no option to give me a feature rundown. So let us scroll down. Again, we have a slideshow and it tells you all the formats that it exports. It gives you some more info, which doesn't, again, doesn't really let us know what features that do these programs have and what's going on. The reason I'm looking at the pro version and the online free version is because I want to see if there's any sort of connection between these two. Is the free version used to advertise for the pro version? Let us click on free online screen recorder and test it out and check it out, have a first impression reaction. One thing I want to mention is this program has online recorder, but you can also download an application. So I'm going to test both of those starting with online first. First thing that happened to me when I clicked start recording is that the website wanted me to download some sort of a launcher that's 1.5 megabytes, something like that. And you install it really fast and the recorder opens up. Here we go, launching application. And the thing that happens is, you could look at that, there's a really nice animation to tell you, oh, we're getting ready and now it's on. One thing that I noticed is the icon for this recorder shows up in your system tray, right down here. There it is. I did test out the program before recording and I did find a couple of issues which I'm going to present to you later. So let us check out the program. Simple and clear is what I can immediately tell. Big red button to tell you, oh, this is where you press record and the rest of the buttons are pretty monotone, simple colors. We can record full screen. The thing I like is both screens. I do have multiple screen monitors and I can record whichever one I want. Also, we can choose a region going up to 1080p. You cannot go over 1080p. The thing is you can also select a region and then you click and drag and look at that, beautiful. I'm, I'm simply going to go with full screen. Then we also have system and mic, which lets us choose what we want to record audio wise. There is no option to record in a separate audio track, but we will do a video editor test later where I import this file that I recorded into my video editor. We have a webcam option, account, if you click on it, there's a little window that opens up. It asks you, do you want to log in, register and stuff like that. And then we also have more and we have settings. So let us actually see the features and what options do you get. I'm actually going to first click on general and this is basic 
stuff we only see keyboard shortcuts and the output directory simple stuff you don't need anything else from this one let's click on recording tab and find out what do we have most of these are self-explanatory so i'm actually not going to explain every single one if i do find out any that are luxury features i will point them out i think that show countdown before recording is sort of a luxury feature you most of the times don't need it but if you want it it's there to give you maybe a, an official feeling that you are recording. I like that there is an option to include the cursor in capture so if you don't want it you can turn that off as well. Now we come to advanced mouse styles. First I'm gonna click on the cog wheel and you will immediately notice that this option actually is to highlight the mouse cursor and you can change the color and change the size of the highlight itself but the thing that I'm really noticing is you can animate mouse clicks with colors which we will also pay attention to after I record and let us use this what is this teal color and maybe orange some just unusual colors and let's use these to actually see what happens next we can click on mouse styles and we can show hotspot or hide it which is turn on or turn off the highlight itself there's no really need for these creative maybe words Sim it's simply highlight when it comes to audio quality you can choose high standard or low i think standard is just fine but let's click on a cog wheel and you'll notice that i can actually select the device that i want to record my speakers or my headphones which i will do right now also my microphone you can click open sound dialog and here's what happens this thing actually interacts with your windows and it opens up your sound panel. Even though it is an online program, it can mess with your computer, which I'll also showcase later. And maybe that's the reason you install the launcher little software that it prompts you to download and install, which is 1.5 megabytes, as I said. The thing is, I looked through the website and there is no explanation to what exactly are you installing? Why, why are you downloading this particular launcher? What exactly is it for? You could be downloading some sort of spying software without you knowing, but they don't explain anything. If you do not download and install that little launcher, you can still record your screen, which I will also showcase later in the video. Moving on to video settings, let us click the cogwheel first. And the thing we see are some luxury features right now. You know that I like to hide desktop icons, which simply, as I want to show you right now, tidies up the desktop if you're going to record it, just makes your recording more professional. Professional. This feature is very nice to have. I am actually going to use these two features as well and simply test them out. One thing I want to focus on a little bit is disable screen saver. I don't think this feature is really necessary because why does your screen saver turn on? Well, it turns on when you are away from the computer, when you're not using it to simply save the screen so not everybody can see what's on your desktop and it gives little animation so if you are going to record your desktop you will probably use your mouse so the screensaver will not activate anyways so why is this feature necessary i don't know but the one time i use this feature is when i play games on an emulator on my computer and i am using my controller because when i do use the controller to play the games the computer doesn't detect the controller as valid inputs and it does act Activate the screensaver because I'm not moving my mouse or using the keyboard but here you are not using this program to record your games so why have this option but hey at least I'm gonna say thank you that it's there I like that I have options no matter if I'm not gonna use them still I want to give a kudos to that and one thing that's interesting allow to move the recording region while capturing this is actually very interesting because many programs once you start recording a certain region you can't move that so this allows it we're gonna test it out as well moving on bitrate we can go up until 20,000 I think 15,000 or even 5,000 is just fine for a desktop recording because there's not much moving on the desktop frame rate you can set it to automatic but you can go up until 50 the thing I noticed is if I type in 60 it actually stays at 60 but if I was to type like Oh, this also works. How much can I actually go? Well, let's put this weird number and see if it actually works. Then we also have codecs, and we can choose two pretty common codecs, and this is the one I use for the most time, in, even in my recordings with my other programs. And then we have mode, which basically tells the program what to prioritize. I'm gonna say prioritize quality. And then video format, here we see what formats we have. I'm gonna leave it at MP4 and hit Okay, let us click on the region and I'm actually going to select a uh, custom region 640 by 360 and that's the region I'm going to use to record this little video and then I'm going to do a full screen recording to give you guys information 
at the end of my video. So let us click record and see what happens. So we have these wiggly eyes. One go and here we go. It's recording. What, what are you seeing right now? We see the region. Let's try to move it first and we see that it actually works. We can move the region. I'm going to do a couple of clicks. Here's one thing that happens. As I turned on the recording you can see that icons are not visible but also the taskbar disappeared because that's the option i picked but what else do you see the button on my taskbar is still visible which is a little bit weird you you definitely wouldn't want your recording to be like this here's what i want to say do not forget the shortcut to stop the recording which for this program is control alt f2 and, we and let's stop really quickly I can't, I can't, st oh, there we go, okay, now I can stop the the video playing. So let's see what what happened here, what actually happened. What, once I stopped the recording, you noticed that the desktop icons appeared, but let's, let me right click, go to view, and you can see that show desktop icons is turned off. So just like the program in previous video, this program enables the desktop icons, but doesn't enable the actual feature in Windows itself. So if I click the button now and I go back again, now it's actually ticked and now I can untick it to hide the icons. Also, what we can see is that the taskbar reappeared upon the completion of the recording. So what happens right now? We have this nice little window that popped up. It's, it's a player. And let's see what happens here. We have simply play. Then we can also click on the timeline. But what happens if I click on the timeline is that the video starts playing automatically, even though I don't want that to happen. I just want to fast forward the video but or skip in time. But this uh, video starts playing, which is weird. Let's move on. So next we have save button to save the video, to upload it to the cloud or to share it. I'm first going to click share and then I can do upload to YouTube, Vimeo, Google Drive or Dropbox, which is just fine. Then we also have upload to cloud. If I click that window pops up, it's going to probably ask me to log in and then upload to cloud. I'm guessing some a PowerSoft cloud service or something. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click save video and save video file. And that's it. It's done. Let's click this button to open the folder. And here's what we have. A recording that's 1 minute and 5 seconds is actually 3.11 megabytes, but it's 360p. Let me right click on it, go to media info and analyze the video really quickly what options were used. So we can see we do have the width and the height that I specified. Frame rate was 25 frames or 26 actually a little bit. 25.9 frames per second. As I scroll, you, if you want to pause the video, go ahead and read what, what is going on. One thing that I do see is encoding settings has a bunch of settings here. Okay, next we have audio. And one thing that I'm noticing, bitrate is 128 kilobits per se second. Even though I'm pretty sure, let me go back to the recorder, the settings that I set the audio quality from low to standard, but the bitrate did not change at all, which makes it a little bit weird. Because once you do change the quality, that's what the bitrate is actually, the quality itself, but nothing. And we also see the sampling rate and some other stuff if you are interested in that. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to do a full screen recording and I am gonna go back to audio quality and set the settings to high instead of standard. What I am going to do right now is I'm going to record the full screen by clicking record, but I will stop my recorder and I'll be back after 30 seconds. So let's click. It's going to start recording in three, two, one. And I have the timer set. So here we go. So here we have the recording. I just finished and it's 30 seconds. And so let's play it. Set, so here we go. Ooh. I'm just gonna right click left Ooh -hoo -hoo. here, drag and you see this? You know, what not refresh to see what exactly is going to happen. Let us preview the full video. And are the clicks how are they gonna look and are they actually going to work? Also the highlight of the cursor itself, how well does it follow the cursor? That's why I'm moving it. So it's gonna be complete soon in a few seconds. Wow! I gotta say these clicks it's not that they look great, but at least they are Hey, it's something. I can't complain. It looks usable, at very least. As far as the quality goes, I almost can't notice the difference. The only time I know... I, I just noticed that there's... Colors are a little bit washed out. That's all I notice as far as the video quality. Really quickly, 30 seconds, 2.62 megabytes. Media info. 
here's the information, but let me check out the audio, which is what I'm interested in, and uh, bitrate 128 kilobits per second, once again. So it seems that me changing the audio quality doesn't do anything. Now that I have tested out the online desktop recorder, I think you were able to see all the features it has. Also, my first impressions are it's pretty capable program. There are a few issues that I am going to mention later that are not that unbearable, but in my opinion, they shouldn't be there. Does this program have luxury features? Well, yes, of course. First things first, it's an online recorder. How much can you ask for? Now going to settings, it has a lot of options, especially if you click this cog wheel and then you have some very luxury features like hiding desktop icons, show countdown before recording, beep on start recording highlighting the cursor as well as these other options are definitely some of the more luxury features. Okay guys, now I'm going to open up my video editing software which is Adobe Premiere Pro and let's see what exactly happens with the video itself. So I drag and drop it, it's importing and 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 there it is. What I'm seeing is it's just normal like every other video file. It's one audio track so it definitely doesn't have the record microphone into separate audio track. And let me click, left click here, drag and, you know, quick preview shows me that the video doesn't lag at all. It works just fine. Next thing, I would like to show you bad things I ran into with this program. First thing would be this APowerSoft online launcher. What's the point of installing it if it doesn't do anything, it seems. You can still record your screen without it. And by the way, I did say it's 1.5, it's actually 1.18 megabytes. When it comes to audio quality, even if you do change the audio quality, it doesn't matter. The audio quality is still going to be 128 kilobits per second. Once you start the recording, this program hides your taskbar, but it doesn't hide the orb. It's still there. And if you, you just make sure that you remember the shortcut to stop the recording, because if you do forget it, there's no way for you to actually get your taskbar back without having to log off the computer. So the shortcut is Control alt f 2 But it doesn't hide the orb. And now your taskbar is back. But the thing that it also does is it puts your icons back on the desktop even though in the Windows itself you have it unticked, you have it hidden. So you have to click it twice for it to start working again. If you do go into the video settings and you change the frame rate to whatever you change it, Let's try 50 and do a quick recording. Upon inspecting the actual video, you will notice that it says that the maximum frame rate and the original frame rate is 50 frames per second, but the actual frame rate is around 23 to 25, 6 sometimes, but that's as far as it's gonna go. Now let me show you some good things that I ran into that I actually liked. If I go to more and to settings, program actually really impresses me with all these extra features that it comes with, especially these here, I wasn't expecting this, are not really compatible with common sense, they still are there and work to some extent. As we are human beings and trying to create stuff for ourselves, we have to create something that makes sense, not something that's going to cause us issues. Why do that? So I guess it is a plus and a little minus. One thing that really impressed me is mouse styles, aka highlight mouse cursor and clicks. It's it's there. Even though they look the, the animations are a little bit weird, at least they are there and you can't complain, especially for a free program. And just one thing that I need to commend the program for is it simply gives you many options. Even though I might not want to use some options, it's still there. Which, that's all a human being can ask for. Let me choose what I want. Even though I might not want something, thank you for the option. A little plus, of course, is that it's an online screen recorder. But again, a little minus is you still, still download something. What for? I don't know. To me, looking objectively, this little segment of positive sides, the pros, was a little bit mixed. I do want to acknowledge that and I do want to say that I didn't do this on purpose. I just wanted to be truthful first and foremost and tell you guys exactly what's going on. Do the features exist? Yes, they do. Do they make sense the way they work? Not really. I would also like to pull up the photo from earlier, must have features, and let us quickly go through these and see if the program has these. 30 frames per second? Check. 1080p? Check. Is there time limit? No. 
Record board desktop, sound and microphone, yes, it works. Record microphone into separate audio track, it doesn't have that option. Record mouse, yes, record a webcam, the button is there. Is there a pause button? Yes. And can you save to common video audio formats? Well, you can save to common video formats. There is no option to save to audio formats as far as I was able to see. Now, in this next segment, I'm going to show you a sample video and I'm going to show you the settings that I used and all the information you might need to know about. Hey everybody, so here I am recording at the desktop. I decided to use a moving background as well as some music. Uh, I'm gonna keep moving, uh, in, in the future I'm gonna use moving backgrounds so we can test out how exactly does it all look, does it look fluent. And just gonna give us a better idea, as well as some background music so you can sort of figure out how loud it gets, depending on what I do. And yeah, just to give a little, you know, variety in the recording so we can see what does it offer. So. And now let's do a final summary and a review. And then in the second, the B part of this video, I'm going to review the application that you download on your computer right after this video, which you can find on my channel and probably in the comments below. And there should also be a button somewhere in the video that you can click on and watch the B part as well. Just like in Resident Evil, Claire A, Leon B. That's what this is. Online A, offline B. <laughs> So, what's the final summary and the review? Honestly, I can't have a negative perspective on this program. I have to give it at least some positive review. Why? Well, first of all, it's online. First and foremost, that's a big plus. Imagine not having to worry about how do you install a program, how do you set it up, and all these things, which honestly makes things... Uh, just makes, I know, I know, these are things you should be able to do anyways, but to remove that out of the photo pretty much is great. In my opinion, it's a huge plus. It comes with a lot of features and all these things. It looks very simple and nice, which is all you want from this program. You don't want it to be a freaking puzzle or anything, so anybody can use it right off the bat. The only thing I would love it to have is the record microphone into a separate audio track. If there's a possibility to add that particular feature, I think this program is gonna become very, very good. As well as if they could change the animation of the mouse style clicks. I don't think the animation does look a little silly, but I'm thankful it's there at least. I, all I'm saying is it could be a little better animation. The program didn't cause me any major headaches. It had me question it a couple of times with certain features that simply don't make sense. Why are you re-enabling my desktop icons? Why are you showing me only the orb? Makes no sense. But honestly, if I was to use this program, I think I definitely could. There's nothing crazy going on here. It's very, very strong middle. That's what I think it is. I am both impressed and glad that th something like this is able to exist for free. First and foremost, I didn't see any sort of advertisement. Nothing was shoved down to my face. It's program, you, and bunch of options that you might want to use or might not. It's up to you to choose. That's why it's called an option. What grade would I give to this program? Well, I am not going to say that in the video. You can check out the spreadsheet, which is in the comments and in the description below. There's a link, you click it, it's a Google spreadsheet, and you'll see that there is a section which says grade from one to 10, and I usually put a grade in there because I don't want to say it in the video because later if I do decide to change the grade I won't be able to depending on the objective picture that I get at the end of all of these reviews once I review a bunch of programs that I have on the list so do check it out I also put some notes some extra stuff that I didn't say in the video so check it out you can also comment by the way over there if you think I didn't do something properly put it in the spreadsheet or put it in the comments under this video you have the options that's what I like to do and that's it do consider subscribing if you want to follow the show and also future shows that will be similar to this one as well and stay tuned for future episodes feel free to share the video and rate the video depending what you think even if you give me a negative rating it's still fine it gives me some feedback as well as do leave the feedback or any sort of comment comments you have in the comment section under the video or who knows maybe one point YouTube is gonna put it above the video I never know what YouTube is gonna do but yeah consider doing those things and that's it this concludes the a section of the video next up the offline application see you guys in the next video very fast always do it on my own so I gotta get through it and the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing never give up never slow till I finally prove it never listen to the nose I just want to keep moving keep my head up when I act, head up, that's a fact, never looking back.